YouTube is it going? The Goat House is back after week 13 Sunday action of NFL football. That sounded weird, but we're rolling with it. Uh, and I'm giving you my takeaways from all those games. We still got three games left in the week. We got two Monday night games and we got a Tuesday night game. Don't like the Tuesday night game. Well, it's football, so I like it. But the Tuesday game kind of shifts around or pushes back some some videos like power rankings. But whatever. The show goes on. Uh, if you're new, we got a lot of NFL content. And even in the offseason, free agency, draft coverage. So you're going to want to click that subscribe button, smash the like button, and uh, turn notifications on so you don't miss a thing. Follow that Twitter, constantly talking NFL during live games, every live game. Again, we got a couple games left this week, a few games left. Uh, check out that Twitter. It's a must-follow. We'd really appreciate that. We're going to do some giveaways in the near future. You're going to need to follow pretty much everything to be involved in that. Uh, Instagram, podcast, Patreon, we have those going on as well. Links in the description comments. Uh, underneath me, you see the Sided app. There's links down below for that. Pretty cool. Uh, sign up. You can win Amazon gift cards through that. Patreon, link down below, has a bunch of extra NFL content, junior score predictions, my bets of the week for NFL, college football, a lot. Playoff predictions, a lot's going on there. A lot of you showing your support. Appreciate you. First game from Sunday, Saints, Falcons, uh, kind of a weird game actually because I thought the Saints were dominating this game. I, I Actually, I thought they outplayed the Falcons by quite a bit in this game even though things got interesting and the Falcons had a shot to win the game. I don't know if anybody was watching this game the whole time, but um, when the Falcons scored the last the last time they scored, uh, the scoreboard like glitched and showed 21-21. I was like, wait a minute. Was I doing the math wrong in my head? That scared me a little bit. Like, was I wrong on what the score was? Like, it was weird. Um, but, yeah, I thought the Saints really, you know, it, it's kind of a positive and negative here because the Saints, yeah, I thought they were dominant in this game. And I, I'm talking about, you know, on Twitter – during this game, like the Saints are just, they're already out in front in the NFC, but they're really pulling away as the front runner in the NFC. And, it, you know, there's other good teams, don't get me wrong, but I mean, they don't have their quarterback and they just look dominant. Everybody's getting better. Taysom Hill's throwing the ball better, you know, throughout this whole game, throwing the ball much better. Looks like an actual passer, you know, a pretty solid one, too. Still running it effectively. Um, you know, the running game's always been effective. You know, they're working. You know, Michael Thomas can get back in the groove, getting some production. Uh, Traquan Smith getting involved, but the defense has been getting better every single week for the last, I mean, since the Bucks game, maybe a week before that even, uh, you know, they've been getting pressure. They've been stopping to run. It's not a surprise. They've always stopped the run. Secondary's been playing better. Janoris Jenkins has been playing out of his mind. Um, Malcolm Jenkins has been playing out of his mind. You know, everybody, they, they, you know, you kind of get the team feeling from the Saints, you know. Their name should be the football team. That, that's what kind of what I think because well, the Saints because they're they're playing, you know that feels like a team. You know, there's a lot of teams like that, but Saints are on a winning streak. They're playing like that. Um, so yeah, if yeah, you know, it's kind of in the third quarter of this game. I'm thinking the Saints are dominant, and I still I'm still high on the Saints higher every week. But uh, they kind of let the Falcons ease back in that game, get back in the game. They actually had a shot. You know, the Saints clutched up, stopped them on fourth down. Uh, and the Falcons actually got another shot. They went for a Hail Mary. That was a little scary, too. I thought they caught it for a second. Um, so kind of allowing the Falcons back in the game and get, letting them get that extra shot. You know, I wish they would put the game away is my point. They need to go out and put the game away so they, they can hold on to these wins that they deserve because they deserve this game, uh, and they got it. You know, so I'm happy about that. You know, usually I don't really have a preference who wins, but when a team kind of outplays another team and deserves to win, that's kind of when I start rooting for the team, you know. Like, they can't blow this. I don't, I don't want teams to blow games. And the Falcons, there's been plenty of times where I wanted them to win, they end up blowing it because I thought they outplayed teams. So they kind of been on the unfortunate side of that. But, yeah, the Saints, you know, and that Taser Mill fumble, I guess you can't let that happen, but I guess that was debatable. I guess I should I, – I wish I could see that again. I probably should have looked for that. Uh, once again, that was a tough one. I thought maybe incomplete on that, but they let it stand. Um, it's one knock, uh, I guess, on the officiate on reviews is they let things stand too much just because, you know, I don't know. I, I mean, they kind of, I don't know how to explain it. I think it's, they, just, they just let things stand a, a bit more, even though, you know, they, they kind of go to there's not enough evidence type of thing, but I don't know. Uh, something like that. There really, there really should be enough, but I guess that was ultimately their, deci their decision. I don't know. Uh, but, yeah, Saints looking really good. Wish they can close this game out. The Falcons' defense has been pretty good. Um, I thought the Saints could have put more points on the board, though. I thought they could have kept moving the ball. 
Um, you know, just go put teams away. That's kind of my my takeaway from this from this game. But the Saints taking control of that NFC, and they have been. Um, that's really all I got for that one. Falcons Chargers next week. Uh, two teams that I said I wasn't now well now with the Chargers, but two teams I said I wasn't picking ever again. That's going to be interesting. But the Falcons have gotten much better since then. Maybe a spoiler on who I'm picking in that game. Lions and Bears. I mean, who would have thought both teams were scoring in the 30s? Who would have thought the Bears were scoring 30 points? Who would have thought the Lions were scoring 30, 30, 34 points? I mean, this is wild. Wild game. Um, credit to both offenses. Um, you know, I kind of go back to early in this game. Um, the, the Lions had a fourth down early in this game. And credit to the Bears. Buster Scrine, I think it was, who... Uh, who made the stop there, one-on-one tackle, great job by him. Agnew, Jamal Agnew, I thought, had this first down easy, though. He kind of slowed up, hesitated a little bit. Uh, and this was a crew. It didn't end It didn't end up being, like, the moment of the game because the Lions ended up winning. But f- for most of this game, like 95%, 98% of this game, whatever, somewhere around there, felt like that was the play of the game. Like, that was the moment of the game because that was such a shift where the Lions were about to get points, whether it was three or seven, six it could have been. There was two missed extra points, I believe, in this game. Um, a lot around the NFL. Um, you know, so that and the Bears get to stop and they go down and get seven. Uh, so this was a this was a huge turning point in the game because it felt like back and forth. The Lions, the Bears take the lead. Lions try to, you know, stay in the area. It's kind of back and forth. The Lions are trying to play keep up with the Bears, but they're they're keeping up, but they're just right behind them because the Bears got the ball. Um, you know, I guess they they get they they they're on top most of the time, but the Lions are coming back. So if the Lions would have got that fourth down, which I think they should have, then it might have been the opposite. It might have been the Lions are scoring. Here comes the Bears. Here comes the Bears. The line, you know, it kind of would have been like that. So I'm kind of thinking that the whole game, it's ba- back and forth. The Bears are dominating the run game. They're you know they're getting the ball out quick. Trubisky's hitting his. He had a pretty solid game. Um, you know, he's hitting his open receivers for the most part, but they're dominating the run game. They're setting up with the run game. The Lions are struggling to tackle. They're not playing as much press press as they usually do. Um, you know, when they know kind of the quick passes are coming. That, that's really what the Trubisky Bears offense is going to do. You know, they're going to get the quick first read receiver. Um, you know, they got some athletic receivers out there. You know, that's what we're going to do. So the Lions, you know, it's weird. The, Patricia's out of there like he should be. The defense actually took a hit from Patricia not being out there. Not that it has been good with him with him there. Um, but it definitely did. You know, they were doing some different things. You know, they weren't as disciplined there on defense. So that's that's something. Uh, but the offense was way better. But that's weird because Bevel was always calling the plays. So that, that's kind of weird. Uh, but the offense was a lot better. Matt Stafford's a lot better. But, yeah, it's kind of back and forth. It's, it's an offensive game. It's kind of surprising. But the Bears are dominant in the run game. Um, and I'm going to come back to that. You know, I'm trying to think of the order I want to talk about things in. But, yeah, Montgomery... Montgomery's running hard. He can't be tackled. It's a, it's a strong runner. He's a strong runner. Um, you know, he, he, they're, they're struggling to tackle him. But Cordero Patterson's averaging five point something yards per carry. Uh, I think Montgomery got 17 carries, four something average. Cordero Patterson, 10 carries, five whatever average. Uh, so that's working. That's working. And they have, they have control of the game, um, you know, for the most part. And it's back and forth. And then we kind of fast forward. Um, to, well, actually, let's let's hold up a second. Matt Stafford. Matt Stafford's been kind of ice cold the last few weeks. He hasn't been playing good. Uh, and, and this, he threw for over 400 yards against the Bears. That play, that bomb to Quintez Cephas for a touchdown, that was the play of the day uh, across the NFL, top of my head. I mean, it has to be. It's one of the best plays of the NFL season. Uh, I mean, if you go back and watch, and I think most people kind of just look yeah, it was a really good deep throw downfield, perfect ball. We've seen that a lot. Um, but I think there's more than that. I, you go back and look at the footwork on that play. I mean, we're talking about how how important foot, footwork is for quarterbacks. I mean, it was textbook. It was ridiculous, ridiculous how he stepped up the pocket um, in the footwork on that was, you know, and he let it sling perfect ball. That's a deep that's a deep ball. Only a few guys can do that. You know, that's something that Mahomes does consistently. That's why Mahomes is known as the best player in football. Uh, but it was good to see that because Stafford has that in him. We knew that, and that's why I think all of us in the back of our minds like want to say Stafford, you know, rank Stafford higher than he probably actually is. But because of that, because of that, and he had those moments in the game. That was that was the play. That was a ridiculous play. And I got to give credit to Quintez Cephas there um, for catching that ball. You know, the body control. But uh, something that kind of goes unnoticed. I think live, I, I thought, ooh, that I was going nuts. I was out of my seat. Um, I just love seeing great plays like that, no matter who it is. No matter who it is, 
Um, so I was excited about that. But then I'm thinking, oh, did Cephas push off a little bit? Is that is that going to get called? That's kind of going through my head. I know some people are probably thinking that. But looking back at it, Cephas did a really good job. This was a really good job in this play because he has Kyle Fuller beat uh, about two, three steps. He hasn't beat, by, we'll say, two steps. Um, and something I noticed from these young re young receivers are taking over the NFL with their their footwork and you know what would you know, gain that extra separation here what I'm about to talk about he had fuller beat by a couple steps and he puts his arm out uses his length there so fuller cannot get in you know can't 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 get in while he's trying to get the ball um he didn't actually push off of him he didn't actually extend off him um, so that is a very nice, I notice a lot of the young receivers are doing that. You can never call that because it's not actually a push off, you know, um, and he's got him beat. So you can't reward the corner by throwing a flag for, for getting beat there. But that I, I noticed that from college receivers that are going to be first round picks. I mean, the last couple of years, these receivers, there's, there's something going on with these young receivers. They're, they're taking over the NFL. And I'd say Cephas is, that's kind of a sleeper guy in there, but that was an incredible play mainly by Stafford, by Cephas. So. Um, I couldn't get over that play. I mean, that, that was the play of the game. Yeah, that's one that gets you out of the seat no matter you – know, I, I mean, the Bears fans are probably a little disappointed, but that's still one that you got to be like, oh, wow, that's that's serious right there. Um, but then fast forward to the end, um, yeah, the Bears kind of got control of this game, but the Lions are kind of sticking around. And then, you know, they're back at their own end in Trubisky, um, who's had a solid game this most part. You know, I think the run game kind of, you know, built up everything, but um, – takes that strip sack, you know, hanging on the ball too long. You know, that's a situation where you just, it just cannot happen, and he loses the ball. Had a strip sack last week that kind of, I think, did them in as well. Um, and that that and there's more blame to Matt Nagy here, and we're going to get to that. That's why I said we're going to circle back to something that has to do with the run game. I'm spending too much time on this game, but it was a wild game uh, and a lot of scoring, you know, impressive offense for both teams. But, um yeah, you can't take that strip sack in that moment. And something, you know, why they people wanted Trubisky in for Nick Foles was to, to, to go against the pressure, to handle the pressure, but mainly thinking he can escape it and run. But we got back-to-back -back weeks he's in where he takes a bad strip sack. Uh, one went for a touchdown. So, you know, that can't happen, even though 30 points throughout the rest of the game sh should be enough at the same time. Uh, so the Lions capitalized on that. Adrian Peterson, strong run. Runs in. The Bears get a shot. There's still a lot of time left, actually. A lot more time. I thought the Lions were going to... And that's kind of a knock on them. They were kind of going to run the clock a little more. Just go put the ball in the end zone. They end up doing that. But um, So I guess I have to give them credit there. But And the Bears get the ball back. And they're, they're actually moving... Uh, I keep forgetting things. We circle back. I want to bash. I got to bash Nagy a little bit. Uh, I mean, he, for the most part, they called a pretty good game. Uh, until the end, you know, I can't stand when teams get conservative, but there are times where it's good to get conservative. And I thought this was the time you're running the ball extremely well. Like I said, David Montgomery, 17 carries, um, and then Cordero Patterson, 10 carries, and they're running extremely well. Like they can't, the first guy is missing, breaking the tackle every time, at least the first guy, these guys need more carries. These guys need more carries in this game. You have the lead, you have control. You don't, I know you hate to, that's why I guess in the third quarter, early fourth quarter, you can't blame them too much because you can't just get you know, shut down because you have a small lead and get completely conservative, but the run game's working. And then you, and you know, you have a quarterback situation, no matter what quarterbacks in the game and you're putting the hand, the, 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 the game in the hands of the quarterback, you know, in your own end, um, you know, who isn't the, you know, the smartest guy with the ball. He had a solid game though, but it's just not smart, especially when the run game's working. Um, so I, I think you just more blame to Nagy there for that strip sack. Um, it just can't happen all around at that moment. The Bears are moving. They have a shot to win. They're getting down there, um, you know, and then they have third down, and it's a tough one because Allen Robinson gets this catch, and the, and the corner falls down, and he actually – Allen Robinson actually probably would have scored on this, but I, you can't blame him too much because in his head he's like, catch the ball. What, what should be in his head is catch the ball, get an extra step for the first time, get out of bounds. All right, that, sh that kind of should be in his head. So you can't blame him for not getting the touchdown, but it's tough because he probably could have had it or close. Um, but the with the big, the brutal mistake from a great receiver was not getting out of bounds or not getting the first round here. He got out of bounds too short. The fourth down should have never been. Fourth down should never been. And I don't mind. I know some people probably rip Nagy for running the ball there. It's not, it's the right call. It's the right call. Montgomery's been breaking tackles. He's a strong short yardage runner. Uh, the Lions were struggling tackling. They're struggling to stop him. Uh, you know, do you want to put your the, the game in the hands of Trubisky here? You did it, and you kind of made a mistake already. Do you want like you know the percentage of completing a pass here? 
you know, short yards. Not, I don't know if it's that high. You're at maybe draw some trickery play out, but if that failed, that really looks bad. You know, so I think it was the right call. The Lions defense steps up. They stepped up with that strip sack. Romeo Aquaro's had a pretty sneaky good season. Uh, so the Lions clutch up and win. Big game for Matt Stafford. That's a wild game. That was a wild game there. It's just tough. The Bears finally score, you know, 30 points and they lose still. So that's it's just that's tough. That's a dagger right there. Uh, wild game for the Browns here. Wow. 41-35. Uh, the score won't show. Um, you know how how well the Browns play. You know how I mean, forty one does. Uh, how much they dominated this game. The Titans actually had a shot though, so it's not like, you know, I'm not a fan of using the term garbage time, and I definitely don't think uh, this this was that though because they actually had a shot. So the Browns, you know, I wish they could put. Even though I was confident to hold the whole the game and they were pretty comfortable, I wish they you know it got a little it gets a little scary a little bit, um, you know, but they dominated this game and. Man, oh man, Baker Mayfield, what a statement game for Baker Mayfield. And I'll tell you what, kind I, I kind of got the chance to go back and look at some of these big plays that that created the Browns to go, get up bigger, to, to get that lead, to get that almost out of reach lead, I suppose. And I noticed something on the Titans defense, who, who has struggled this year. So a good, a good teams like the Browns, you know, it's not a surprise they're able to do this. I mean, 41 points is something else. But um, what I noticed, the Titans really – just based on what the players were acting, some of the defenses they were in, that, that I, I'm, I'm assuming just based on what I've seen from this game that they were just only f really focused on stopping the run. They, they came in there and they're like, let's just – and that's what you have to do with the Browns. So I'm not really trying to bash the Titans. It's kind of what you have to do. Um, but they were – basically what was said, I, I just – what I picture that was said, basically when they were going over film, the game plan overall – uh, was let's make Baker Mayfield beat us. Let's what's, what's, what's do that. Let's make him beat us. Let's stop the run. Everybody, you know, get up. You know, you see DBs, their first step was up a lot of the times. Um, you know, only one safety back, even his first step's up. Uh, you know, and, and make Baker Mayfield beat us is, I think, what was the game plan. And you don't really have to rip the Titans for that. The players could have done a better job. If, you know, like I said, first step up should be back. Mistakes like that. Um, you can't, you, you can't, you have to kind of criticize him for that. But, and my point is Baker Mayfield beat them. Let's make Baker Mayfield beat us. Baker Mayfield beat them. And, and Brown still run, ran the ball effectively. Chubb did, did his job there. Jarvis Landry's been uh, sensational lately, but Baker Mayfield went out and beat Tennessee Titans. This is a statement. This is a statement game for him. Um, yeah, I was kind of giving him a lot of credit early on in the year because, you know, you see Stefanski coming from the Vikings, running a lot of play action, going to the Browns, more play action. It's the same offense, but Baker Mayfield runs that play action at a pretty high level. And I think it's because of his, his sneaky athletic ability, how fast he's able to, how much faster the play goes. You know, I talked about this a lot earlier. His cousins, you know, Kirk Cousins with Stefanski with the Vikings offense, really good play action passer. You know, Baker Mayfield looks better because how much faster it goes. Um, and people have been sleeping on Baker. People have been ripping him too much in, in wins. You know, I, I have not been – one of those people because I think, you know, he's missed some throws, you know, last week, some wide open touchdowns. It'll, it'll happen. You do deserve to get criticized for that. But um, to me, he hasn't really, I think he's had one game where he's kind of let his team down really, you know, he's played, he's played pretty damn good. Uh, and this was a dominant game for him. Um, you know, the offensive line though, the offensive line just dominated the Titans defense, the offensive line and the Browns are, you know, most people are like, you, you find that one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL you're in business. It's the most important position in football. Um, some people will, you know, think, well, the offense line's got to be done first. You got to build. You the most important thing is building the whole offense line unit, getting that ready. Some people think pass rush, uh, and the Browns are making that case for offense line because how dominant, how how much they bully other teams. Uh, you know, since it's got complete now, it's a complete offense line. So this offense line deserves a lot of credit there. Uh, but yeah, the Browns came out, dominated this game. I like that they, they didn't get conservative. Uh, they kind of did at, at one point, I guess, when the Titans are starting coming coming back. But you know, it's seventeen seven or twenty four seven. You think, all right, they're not going to be throwing the ball downfield anymore. But they're still doing that, so I like that. They have the keys to be to. They have the game plan against pretty much every team. If it works, it works because you control the time of possession. Um, you're a dominant run team. You're wearing teams out, and then you have that sneaky pass. That you know the sneaky play action pass plays that are daggers that are home run balls, you know, that, that'll surprise the team when you got them on their toes about the run game. They have they have the game plan. They have the keys to success to beat pretty much anybody. You just have to start strong. We've talked about that. You have to start strong um, because they, they almost can lose anybody as well because if they don't start strong. 
Um, but this, this was a well-executed game. Defense continues to make plays. You know, you can move the ball on the Browns, but they continue to make plays. Miles Garrett back in the action. He's getting pressure. Uh, Sheldon Richardson's very, very underrated. This guy's a stud. Uh, but, yeah, you, you can throw the ball on them, you know, but these guys continue to make plays at the right moments. Titans just put the ball on the ground too many times. You can't, you cannot do that and win the game. If they play it again, it could be a whole different game here, but, you know, you can't take the Browns lightly there. You can't just, just game plan for Nick Chubb. Baker Mayfield can beat you too, and he proved that in this game. Um, Derrick Henry, not the best game from Derrick Henry. You know, he kind of slid up in, in my mind to – uh, you know, he kind of bumped up to maybe second in the MVP race behind Patrick Mahomes uh, after the Ravens or after the the Colts game, Ravens and Colts, I suppose. Uh, not the best game here, and you know, he's not he doesn't get you know, it's not like a plummeting stock for me because he's Derrick Henry. I know how good he is. Uh, I knew how good he was, you know, was coming out of Alabama, but not the best game for some reason. That's kind of the last person I would expect, but for some reason he wasn't running too hard in this game. He wasn't running too hard. He's seen him fumble, which is rare. Um, they they had a. You know, fourth down stop, you know, I, it feels like he wasn't really just blasting through that hole like he usually does. There was a two-point conversion where I think he had it easy, and he didn't, you know, I don't know. It was weird. It was weird. I don't know what was up with him. He, it didn't really seem like Derrick Henry. So because of what he showed us in the past, we're able to kind of just try to forget about that. We're able to kind of forget about it and know what to expect going forward. So I'm not going to make too much of it, but it's a, you can, you, you're allowed to be a little disappointed because you just don't expect it from a great running back like that. So... Uh, I thought Tannehill played. Just, Tannehill played well. You know, just too many fumbles. AJ Brown putting the ball on the ground. Humphreys without end up being an interception. You know that end up being. You know, we're looking at it. The Titans they got they got outplayed in this game. Playing simple, they got dominated for the most part. But they actually could have came back and won this game. They actually could have. They had a shot to get on side. Obviously that didn't work out. There's only twenty something seconds left after that. Um, but they all the mistakes they made made and they were still in the game. You know there, there was right before half. Uh, they were about to be set up to attempt a field goal, I think, and then they they fumbled the ball there. Uh, Derrick Henry fumbled, which was pretty rare. Um, and, yeah, the Humphreys one, where I think that ended up being an interception. Uh, you know, and then Derrick Henry missing out on that two-point. There's a lot of things where they actually – you think about it, they actually could have came back in this game. Now, if the Browns felt – um, felt the pressure a little more, you know, if the Titans did come back and it was a tie game or around there, I think the Browns could have, you know, maybe, maybe that extra play to kind of get back to lead. I think, you know, I'm, I was confident with them because they were successful in this game. But it was it's a weird game, though, because the Browns kind of dominated them, but the Titans, you know, if they didn't make that many mistakes, you know, take away one mistake, credit to the Browns, forcing those, uh, yeah, may, maybe they could have pulled something miraculous off. But Browns can't take them lightly. Baker Mayfield, I mean, that, that's, that's for me, it's a feel-good. I like Baker Mayfield. He's number, he was my number one quarterback that, that year in the draft. Um, you, you can't take him lightly. You know, you, you make Baker, your game plan is to make Baker Mayfield beat you. He goes out and he beats you. You got to love it. You got to respect it. Bengals, Dolphins, slow start. I wish the Dolphins, um, I wish there was a little more urgency you know, in these games, it's weird too because you look at the difference of, I guess, urgency and, and explosive plays. For the most part, you know, in the second half of this game, they they went and did that. Tua, you know, played a great game. Gasicki, we'll get to that. Um, but you look at the difference when Fitzpatrick's in, when Tua's in, uh, the explosive plays, but the urgency of the, I guess, the play calling the team it was quite the difference, and that makes, I guess, some people think, man, is is is, is Fitzpatrick better right now? But it's not, it's not really that. You know, I, I think maybe it's play calling. It's just, you know, urgency usually comes with, you know, the play calling, you know, wanting to push the ball downfield. And I know, we know Tua has it in him. So I kind of put that into play calling a little bit. There is a difference with the quarterbacks, but I think it's how comfortable they – it's weird, though. You, feel, you, should, you draft the Tua that high. He, when, you let him, when you let him make those explosive plays, I think he does it. Does it pretty high level. Um, so it's just, it's just about letting him, I, I guess. That's kind of my takeaway. It's an odd situation. But I think some people kind of look at it and you kind of wonder. It does make you wonder, you know, why is Fitzpatrick when he's in? There's more, but it's not really because of the talent of the quarterbacks, even though some people might think that. Um, so it's pretty interesting. But when they got rolling in this game, they kind of got rolling. You wish they would get more, you know, more urgent, more more points, more, you know, put away a team that you should come on, you should handle. That's what I want here. But two was making some good th throws down the stretch when they're letting him throws out, you know, on the move, wasn't taking sacks or anything like that. Gasicki. Um, it's good to see him getting going with Tua because he kind of got quiet when Tua came in. Every time Fitzpatrick's in, he's getting going, but now he gets going again. Um, 
yeah, he's just famous for going up and getting the ball, taking the ball away from from everyone. Uh, but then that one-handed catch across the middle of the field, that was actually a good throw because that was zipped through traffic. It was a little high. If it did, if he didn't make that one-handed catch, it could be picked. But it, So you could say, he might be a little fortunate there. Uh, but it was, I thought it was a good throw. I thought it was a pretty good throw through traffic there. He zipped it right in there. That's a hell of a catch, though. Kasicki, there's a shortage on tight ends, and Kasicki's making his name up there. He, is he a top five tight end right now? He, he might just be. Yeah, I think he, I think he has to be right now. Um, big time player there. So they started getting Gaskin going too. Yeah, Tua played a great game in the second half. I think it's because the Dolphins allowed him to. That, that's my take. You know. Um, they got things going. The defense I talked about, they're going to get pressure. If they're going to blitz, they're going to you know pass. You know They're going to get the edge rush. Van Noy is kind of a mixture of those things. That's why I'm a big Kyle Van Noy guy. Was, you know, he was one of my top free agent uh, uh, guys you know, going in this offseason. You know, the Dolphins, he ended up in the right spot, Brian Flores. We, we love to see that. He had a big-time game, Kyle Van Noy. Got, got the pressure. Got the, I think he got three, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think he definitely got three. Uh, that's big time, big time. Uh, yeah, the Bengals just couldn't really do much. Kind of expected. Not the off. They don't have the offense line. They don't have their quarterback. I think uh, Allen ended up getting hurt at one point. Uh, they don't have Joe Mixon. Joe Mixon could be a key to change this game a little bit because I think you you can run on the Dolphins even though it's a really good defense. Um, you know, Howard get his hands on the ball once again. It's one of the best corners in football right right now. I think it's the best playmaking corner in football. Uh, and then t- Tyler Boyd kind of had to carry he had that big explosive play there. Love me some Tyler Boyd. You guys know that. Um, he kind of had to carry that offense. T. Higgins was solid as well. Um, not not much else on that game though. Yeah, kind of a quiet game. Dolphins sneak. You know, they're they're a sneaky team. They're 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 staying. They're sticking around there. They're in the playoff run right now. They're in the playoffs right now. If it ended today, uh, Jags Vikings. The Vikings always know how to make things interesting, don't they? That that going against team that's on a what a ten game losing streak. Uh, as a Vikings fan, I kind of have a feeling this could this could happen though. Um, but yeah, they make it. They make it. Ah, oh, they always do this. Two missed extra points. What the hell was Dan Bailey doing? Two missed extra points. Uh, a missed field goal to win the game. Dalvin Cook muffs the handoff. I don't know what that was. A weird. You know, if if he got hit and he fumbled, that would be yeah, somewhat normal. Even though it's at the at the one half yard, whatever the one yard line. But something with the handoff. It was kind of a fluky play. All of that. And you just needed one thing to go right, and they go to overtime. You know, if they would have made an extra point, that's the way I'm thinking. Uh, the Jags did fumble, kind of make mistakes of their own there. Uh, first touchdown of the game was pretty wild. I don't know what happened there. It was off. Was it Boyd's shoulder pad right in the Chenault? Good concentration by Chenault. Wow. Um, touchdown there. The Jags were just – they were playing good defense early. They are getting pressure in this game. Uh, I think it was about uh, – Clavon Chase on finally kind of getting going, getting a lot of pressure, getting after Cousins. Uh, Joe Schobert felt like he was every he – he had a pick six – uh, the pick six was interesting too because uh, a lot of people blaming Dalvin Cook for that, uh, and you guys know if you've been with me for a while, I hate when people. Sometimes it's sometimes it's accurate, but I hate when people blame like the target for quarterback interceptions. Uh, a lot of the time, you know, you can't just blindly throw it at a guy that's not looking. I and it turns out that that Cook ran a wrong route or was supposed to be looking, but doesn't mean you have to throw it there, you know. So I put the blame on Cousins there. Joe Schobert takes it for six. Good instinct to play for him. Um, he actually, Joe Schobert, before that one-yard fumble, um, Dalvin Cook was breaking all kinds of tackles, was about to get in the end zone, and Schobert saved that. And then the end of the quarter happens, so we got to sit around and wait, and then comes back, and then Dalvin, something happened with the, we talked about that, with the handoff exchange. I put that one on Dalvin Cook, though. Um, that one on Dalvin Cook. Cousins does need to get the ball in there, but but still, that one on Dalvin Cook, the, the pick six on, on Kirk Cousins, and some people might be opposite thinking on that, but I'm pretty firm on that. Um, yeah, so Joe Schober, like I said, it makes a big plays there. That wouldn't kind of go unnoticed that he made the touchdown-saving tackle before that fumble there, so that was pretty big. Uh, Thielen and Justin Jefferson were doing their thing, making contested catches. Uh, I mean, the footwork from Justin Jefferson. I was talking about, I mean, these young receivers, they're taking over the NFL. This guy's just a rookie uh, they, they got better footwork than the veterans. They got, you know, they're, they're better at fighting off corners without interfering better in the veterans for the most part. It's, it's crazy. It is crazy. It's weird. I think if you took, if you grabbed 10 football fans and told them to make receiver rankings, you know, right now, I think it'll look totally different across the whole 10, you know, at this point in this era of the NFL, I think some people are going to put some of the, you know, some of the second year guys, DK Metcalf, AJ Brown, Terry McLaurin, they're getting up there. It's crazy. It's weird. It's kind of the weirdest position, you know, just because you know, there's so many different arguments and who could be towards the top. It's wild stuff. Uh, 
I mean, other than the pick six, you know, Cousins started to heat up. He's he's able he's been throwing the ball on the run pretty well, which has kind of been the impressive the kind of thing he's been lacking. Um, you know, kind of need to play action to do that. Now he can do it a little more. Um, getting some good throws, the feeling for a touchdown. You know, just Jeff, Jeff, just Jefferson, uh, some perfect throws. So he had a pretty good game uh, after he got going quite early. Dalvin Cook started to get going. Uh, they were forcing some fumbles. Cameron Dancer, I thought, had a pretty good game. Jordan Brailford, a guy they took off of Washington's practice squad, a guy that was a sleeper of mine a few years ago, a few years ago out of Oklahoma State. He's sitting on Washington's practice squad because Washington's got so many that goddamn good pass rushers. So the Vikings take him. He only plays about 14 snaps, makes, makes a big impact. But yeah, I can't believe this game went to overtime. Uh, one, the thing that makes me the most mad about the Vikings, what they consistently do, is they're unable to put teams away when I think they have the capabilities of putting teams away. I think the fans will know I'm talking about. You know, they if the clock is rolling down and it's getting late in the game, somewhat late even, not like real late, and they're up by any amount of points, they're thinking they're winning, but that's the final score. That They think that's it. They, they're, they're, they're a little bit too much trust in their defense, even though their defense did pick it up in the second half. Um, but, yeah, and then not a good game from Dan Bailey. And then they actually get stopped in overtime right away. Credit to Jack defense. They got a big time sack. Dwayne Smoot had a pretty um, pretty big game, actually. Yeah, and they were making plays there. Uh, Jags get the ball back. Harrison Smith kind of does does what he does there. He makes that big-time interception, and the Vikings work the field, get down there, and kick the field, field goal. I was getting a little scared. Bailey was going to miss that because they were – you know, kind of just settling on the field goal when he's missed two extra points, but it was a little closer. It was kind of the old extra point, so they make the kick. Um, yeah, Jags pass rush played a good, pretty big, pretty good game. Um, too many fumbles for them, though. Yeah, Joe Schobert played a great game. Uh, Nerve wracking game as a Vikings fan. Um, they got they got to put that game away. Uh, Raiders Jets. Uh, <sighs> You guys know this by now. I'm just, uh, and a lot of you out there on this channel, you're here because you're a diehard football fan, just in general. I'm a Vikings fan, but I think first I'm a diehard football fan. And as a diehard football fan, I don't like this game. I, I just don't, you know, maybe I'm weird. Maybe I'm weird. I, I, I'm not a fan of this game. You know, because I want, you know, football to me is the best sport. The NFL is the best league. It's the best sport in all of football, you know. And I want everybody in the world to think that. That's just how I am. Um, it's okay if you don't think that, you know, I'm not like, no, you need to think I'm not forcing it, but you know, I think you know what I mean as a diehard football fan, it's not really a good look for football. That, that's just me. And, uh, you know, some people, I can't, you know, people will tell me I'm a Jets hater, Raiders hater. It's pure nonsense. I, I, I love football. I like every single team. Um, so somehow somebody would take, take that away and comment that, um, somehow, some way, cause I've seen it plenty of times and it just makes no sense and it's wrong. Uh, but yeah, I'm not a fan of this game. Um, well, let me give credit where credit's due here. You know, Cleveland Farrell, you know, he he came back as a top pick. People kind of down on him. He came back, uh, and he had a monster game. He had, he had two strip sacks on Sam Darnold. That's two sacks on the board for him. That's a huge game for him. Uh, you know, I thought Derek Carr made throws where, when he needed to. I'm a big Trayvon Mullen fan. This guy's a stud. He's going to be a top-tier corner one day. He's already climbing the ranks. Uh, love me some Trayvon Mullen. You know, Ty Johnson ran the ball extremely well for the Jets. Uh, Crowder had two touchdowns right off the bat. The Jets fought. Those players, they got a lot of young guys, first-time players, you know, in there. They're, they're fighting. You know, I like Marcus May. Uh, they're, they're fighting. Those guys are working their ass off. I mean, just like the Raiders are as well. You know, so you got to give credit where credit's due there. But the things I just don't like, really, the end. I, I mean, Greg Williams ended up getting fired on on this, so that was interesting. I mean, you should get fired on it, but you kind of you kind of wonder, um, you know, you just just because there's no NFL coach that should call it cover. I'm kind of fast forwarding already to the end of the game that, that should call it cover zero in that situation. But I think. Combining, I talked about this a lot on Twitter, but combining the Patriots game, the Jets versus Patriots game, with the, the end, the end of that versus the end of this, um, is just makes it that much more like mind blowing. Like there's just no way, there's just no way he's thinking like this. This was real, because at the end of the Patriots game, and I went on a rant about this at the end of that game too, but this is kind of the topper. Those these two combined, Jets, they kind of outplayed the Patriots in that game for the most part. Uh, one thing they couldn't let up was field goal position. They knew the Patriots were going for field goal position to win the game with a field goal. Um, you know, they weren't going to, with Cam Newton, they, you know, they weren't going to, they could have, but it was very unlikely they were going to take a shot downfield. It, you're worried about field goal position. Every coach, everybody watching the game knows about that. You can't let up the field goal to lose the game by, a, by, on that field goal. Um, so really typically in that situation, 
you can be in man or zone. You kind of want to you know, get tight coverage. You don't want to play too far off. You don't want to play soft. But they're in a zone coverage, and they're in prevent. You know, they're way off the ball. They're allowing 15 to 20 yards in that play. The one thing you cannot do, because that's field goal position, free of field goal position, they kick the field goal, they win the game. Patriots win. It was the wrong call, defensive call for that situation. Fast forward to this game. The Raiders can't win. They're down by four points. They can't win on a field goal. You know, you need, and time's running out. This is it. Uh, the Raiders got the speed receivers. They like taking deep shots. On top of all that, you know they got to go for the end zone. You know they got to go deep. You know they like to go deep. They're kind of a deep team. Um, and so, all right, let's go, let's go back to the Patriots game. Let's run that same thing. Let's, now it's going to work this time, right? You're in a zone, zone little play a soft coverage, more like a prevent. That makes sense, right, against this team, this situation. Now, now it makes sense. No. Where was it this time? They run cover zero, which which is man coverage. You're, blitz, you're blitzing pretty much every, uh, everybody. Sometimes there's no safety in cover zero. Sometimes there's one. In this case, there was one, but he was in man coverage. He was covering somebody in the slot. So really there was, there was not really, there, I mean, yes, really, there was no safety help. The other safety had a delayed blitz. I don't know what that was. Linebackers blitz. You could have ran this. Where was this against the Patriots? Where was the prevent this time? This is, is there's no, I, I just hard to believe that an NFL coach, experienced NFL coach, has a pretty good resume in the past, uh, not with his uh, philosophy, I suppose, if you know what I mean, but as a defensive coach, um, Greg Williams, that is, I think for the, my point is for the most part of his career, he's been a good, smart defensive coordinator. Um, it's just hard to believe he would run this, you know. Uh, it's all one-on-ones, no help. You put your your defense in a poor situation, and they did it, they did it the play before too. So in in Derek Carr overthrew, I think it was Aguilar. He had him. He overthrew him for a touchdown. Next play, run it back. This time, Rugs got to give credit. Derek Carr placing the ball right. Rugs for for uh, the the speed, uh, the footwork there, kind of quick step. You know, faked. The, I think it was Lamar Jackson out a little bit. Um, so you got to give credit there, uh, for sure. But uh, I it it, it kind of gets to me. Maybe I'm weird. It kind of gets to me that you that it, that somebody would kind of. It's almost like they let the team win in that situation. He got fired, so it makes things interesting. But who knows? They did it against the Patriots. Did it against the Raiders. I think putting those two together and how, um, what happened. I explained it all. Um, it's it's odd stuff. So I don't know. You know the the Raiders. You know Darnold didn't play good. They got a pick on Darnold. They got two strip sacks. You know, and, and they and they were about to lose this game. You know, that's a game they should win. That's a game that you know, given the, what's the rosters, you know, the teams, the circumstances, it's a game they should win. So you, you know, the Raiders pulled it off. You kind of got to criticize them a little bit there. It's a game they should win. I know Derek Carr. You know, Henry Ruggs had that game winner. That was great, but he did have a ball go through his hands. It got picked. I think he fumbled as well. Um, so some things you got to clean up there. And they had their turnovers or, as well that don't, I guess, normally happen. Um, but yeah, it's tough. You know, the Jets should should win that game. You know, that should win that game. So that that's it's a tough one. It's a it's a weird one. Um, that's a good momentum win for the Raiders. Uh, they got the Colts next week. That's a big game. Uh, speaking of the Colts, Colts Texans is an odd game too. But I I still don't know how the score finished twenty six to twenty. You know, this this had all the makings of a maybe even forty something to forty something, thirty to forty. I don't know, something like that. Um, the production, the, the players had the production that says that, you know, but in 20, it doesn't say 26 to 20, uh, two points scored in the second half, you know, credit to the defenses, but this is where I think teams get too focused on running the clock. You know, it's kind of a back and forth game. Um, but both teams are in it and they both kind of know it, uh, just too much, you know, letting off the gas a little bit. And I hate that. And it, and it caught and at the end of the day, the Texans lose. So it kind of cost them a little bit, but it very well could have cost the Colts um, there in the end. The Colts got pretty damn lucky, Neil. Let's be honest. That's about as lucky as you can get. But, um, you know, they, they played a good enough game to win the game at the same time. You know, I, I think they – you can argue this on both ways, but I think the Colts probably should have – they did. I think they probably should have won the game, and, and again, they did. But you could kind of argue with the Texans if they didn't fumble at the end there. Uh, but the Colts made the you know the big time defensive plays at the end. They played great defensive football in the second half. Um, but yeah, the fumble at the end, you know, just a, a mistake by the you know the center exchange of Sean Watson. That did it. You see JJ Watts facing the center. You know that, that's a tough one. That that kind of did him in. Um, but yeah, just so much production, so much scoring. I mean, Kiki Kute's going off. Chad Hansen's going off. That's when you know it should be more scoring there. Uh, but. Yeah, I think the quarterbacks played a good game. Deshaun Watson's interception really wasn't on him. That was debatable too. You know, I 
I, I, you know, I, Kenny Moore made a great play. You know, I don't really have anything wrong. It's a tough one. You know, it stood on the field. I think if they call it incomplete or a catch down or whatever on the field, they probably would have stood with that. So that's kind of a tough one. I think key moments of the game, uh, the Colts, the Colts got stopped fourth down. They got a, they got a safety. I think that safety was big as well. There's a lot of key little moments like that. Kenny Moore, Kenny Moore. Justin Houston, DeForest Buckton, these are guys that were just game changers in this game. Justin Houston with three sacks in this game. These were game changers. So these are the guys that kind of made me feel like, yeah, the Colts probably should win this game because of the, the, the you know the the big time plays like that that they earned there. But the Texans had a shot. They had a shot to win that. It was an unfortunate fumble. But yeah, a lot of production early on in this game. And it felt like it's gonna be high scoring. Just kind of shutting down. And you know, Taylor running wild, you know, at, you know, as we kind of expected against a good, a good matchup for him against the Texans defense. Um, but just kind of just shutting down a little bit. You know, I guess getting conservative, just too worried about the clock. Uh the, the time of possession game is very important. It's very important. Uh, it's how you don't allow good teams to get on their groove. And these are two good teams. Texans, the record might not say it, but it's a good team. It's a good team. You know, it's an explosive team. So time of possession is pretty key, but I think I think coaches sometimes get too much into that, too wrapped up in it. When it's a back and forth close game, anybody can win. You should not be going in that mode. You know, sometimes I feel like coaches think the clock is more important than just scoring points and winning the game. All right, that's something that drives me nuts. Um, so I think that's what happened here. I guess Colts getting stopped on fourth down. The Texans had some good blitz calls. They had some good uh, the linebacker duo. You know, Cunningham and Adams. They made that stuff big time play. The, the Colts getting their sacks, getting their safety, stopping the run when they ran the ball. Um, you know, they didn't allow Watson to get a passing touchdown actually, which is pretty wild. Um, you know, so the defense has stopped, stepped up, and I guess that'd be a reason why the, the points didn't you know get up there. But I think teams kind of worried about the clock. Kind of disappoints me a little bit and was the reason for that. Wild game, though. The Texans actually had a legit shot to win by one point at the end. Uh, that, that's a tough one. But the, Col- I, the Colts made some big-time defensive plays to kind of earn that throughout the game. And I thought, you know, Rivers played well. Taylor played well. I just, I just keep saying it, but it's kind of odd to finish 26-20. Uh, Colts got a big game. They're going to play the Texans again in a couple weeks. So it's a big game against... Uh, uh, against the Raiders next week. Two dramatic endings to those games. So that's usually it's tough for teams. It's weird because when you win kind of dramatically a little bit, the Raiders are a lot more dramatic than the Colts. Obviously, um, you kind of get momentum, but it is tough to play fresh off a week where you know that's kind of been proven too. So um, when you had kind of a win like that, so it's going to be an interesting game to say the least. Uh, Rams and Cardinals. Rams, the Rams drive me nuts because even though I love I love this team at the same time, I've been saying that, but. I get so high on this team and they just suck it right out. You know, last week at the Niners, maybe it's just the Niners thing. Uh, what's what's for the Rams? Say, let's hope that you know, because there's just so many d- dominant wins. I, I think they won this game, 38-28. It's a pretty good win, getting 38 points, winning by 10 against division rival at the division rival's house. It's, it's a statement win there, but it felt like they won by even more than this. They dominated this game by even more than this. Uh, they had a blown coverage early, which was unlike the Rams. I'm not really too worried about it. You know, it shouldn't happen. It's unlike the Rams. It's a negative play, obviously. Uh, but it's just something that doesn't really happen. So I think it was kind of a fluky thing. Um, hopefully, I for their sake. Um, you know, but, <clears throat> you know, and, um, yeah, I had the Rams dominate this game. And my problem with the Cardinals, and I kind of said this weeks ago, uh, people kind of got on me for it. And they're a good team, though. They're like, they're like, and this is why it's weird. That's why the Cardinals are a weird team. Because I value, I view them as a good team, kind of a sneaky team. Uh, a team that it's tough to game plan for, but that's kind of going away. People are figuring out how to game plan for Kyler Murray and this team. They are. Like the Rams defense, they are. Um, but it's a good team that I don't really trust on either side of the ball. They're pretty solid on either side of the ball, but sometimes they're pretty inconsistent. And I called them inconsistent at one point earlier this season. People got on me for that, but you see what I'm talking about here. Um, yeah, so it's, it's, it's weird. It's a good team that I really can't fully trust on your side of the ball. I want to, but I can't really do it. So that's why it's strange. The Rams is a very good team. Um, there are, you know, if they limit the turnovers, they're, 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 they might be the best team in the NFC then. You know, tough company. The Saints are pulling away there. But um, if they limit the turnovers, easier said than done. You know, they had a bad uh, fumble on a punt in this game, which kept the Cardinals in the game. It kept feeling, feeling like the Rams are going to pull away. They're dominating. They're, they're outplaying the Cardinals by a wide margin, it felt like, or maybe not a wide margin, but more than the score says. Uh, you know, Jared Goff took care of the ball. He played a damn good game. He took care of the ball, you know. So you do have to rely on some things for the Rams, though. You know, you do have to rely on that. You know, he threw the ball a lot, Jared Goff, that is. If he just threw one interception, that, you know, 
Maybe he would have taken more than one. But so that's the thing with the Rams. They're a very good team. They're a very good team when they play like this. They're yeah, they're dangerous. They're good. Uh, the two young running backs got going. Cam Akers, Daryl Henderson. Um, you know, Higby's been good this year. Jared Goff, like I said, played a good game. Jalen Ramsey was shut down for the most part out there at corner. Uh, the defense is everywhere. This defense feels like a defense, like a team. You know, they're flying to the ball. They're making plays. They're getting pressure constantly. They're they're well coached defense. Um, you know, the blitz game's great. They knew how to game plan for Kyler Murray. Teams are figuring that out. Kind of another bad game for Kyler Murray. Not as bad as last week. He did have some touchdowns to go for it this week, but um, handling pressure. You know, continuing to back up, throw up, throw off the. The back foot, just going too far back, rolling into pressure, rolling into sacks, just not a good game. Kind of throwing the ball up. I think he had a touchdown late to Arnold, and you might as well throw it up then, but throws like that, you know, just off the back foot, they show up a bit too much, and it's, it's a little scary at times. The footwork's a little sloppy, so haven't really been thrilled. I know he has that big playability, and, he's a, and he can be a dominant player, and he's a good young player of the future, but I haven't been really thrilled with his play lately. Uh, I haven't been thrilled with Cliff Kingsbury, but nobody really has been uh, to managing timeouts, uh, play calling, just all of that. Um, I don't know if it was that bad in this game. There's definitely been there's been games where they've won that's been worse than this game. Uh, this game was just the Rams just outplayed them. They were the better team on this day. They were just they were just outplaying them. Uh, it was more of that. Uh, but the play calling and management of the game definitely needs to be better. Defense, it felt like it was really, I know there's some other guys that probably had moments, but it felt like it was really Buda Baker out there kind of carrying the defense for the most part. Uh, yeah, it's a dominant win for the Rams. This is the type of games that makes you really high on the Rams. Sometimes they kind of let you down, though. Got to control the turnovers. Jared Goff did his part in this game. That's good to see. Uh, Giants and Seahawks, a shocker, an absolute shocker here. Um... No Daniel Jones. And I said it during the week. If they had Daniel Jones, and everyone thought I was crazy, you know, the other guys in the goat house, uh, I think it was. They, if they had Daniel Jones, I would say, this is a weird match for the Seahawks. This is a weird match. They would have a shot. They don't have Daniel Jones. Ends up being a weird match for the Seahawks. The Giants win the game. This was kind of my problem with the Seahawks weeks ago, too. Like a good team, a contender, we still value we view them as because uh, they've experienced, they have Russell Wilson, they have Deke, you know, you get my point. I don't need to go into it. Um, but at the same time, my problem on them, which I think people let me have it for it, you know, when predicting the playoffs, why I didn't have them really going all the way, um, you know, a few weeks ago, mid season, uh, because the Seahawks, it also takes that wrong team to see, which is quite a few of them, you know, a team with a decent defense, um, to take them down because they're there. You can slow them down. They rely too much on their, their offense being good in a game like this. The defense is improving. We think they haven't really played the best competition offensively to um, you know against opponents' offense to say that for sure. But when the Giants needed a big play, they were able to get that big play. You know, Gallman kind of ran all over them there. Alfred Morris had some moments. They didn't. They had Colt McCoy. He was slinging the ball. The interception was a little weird. <clears throat> Don't put that on Colt McCoy at all. Really there. Um, but my point is they rely on their offense too much. But the, And that is when, you know, team like the Chiefs, you know, when everyone's calm with, confident with them because it's when all said and done, when it really matters, it feels like they can score on anybody, almost anybody. Seahawks are a dominant offense that can be slowed down. And while their defense, they are improving, they can make plays, but if you really need a score on them, you might, you know, you can move the ball on them. I mean, they, almost everybody can, you can see here. Um, so that's why it's a tough matchup. Because the Giants' defense is pretty good, it slowed them down, and there might there's going to be some better defenses in, in the playoffs. Look at the Saints, look at the Rams. We've seen Rams were a, a, a matchup problem for the Seahawks already. Um, the Saints and the, and the Rams, yeah, is that what I said? Yeah, those are the two teams mainly that could be problems for them to, you know, for their defense. Um, so that's why it's tough to buy fully into the Seahawks. Now losses like this happen. It happens. It's happened to Super Bowl teams. I mean, the year the Giants years ago, but the Giants won a Super Bowl one year where they were losing every bad team they play, and they're beating every good team. I actually picked them to win the Super Bowl that year because of that. They would dominate all the good teams. They would lose the bad teams. They barely squeaked into the playoffs. They end up winning the Super Bowl. But I believe it or not, I actually picked them that year, but it was because of that reason. Uh, off topic, though, but my point – well, not really. My point is that kind of happens. So you can't really take this loss and say, well, the Seahawks aren't going to go anywhere because of this loss. Not, It's not really – that's not the case. But things happen in this game that I kind of worried about – with the Seahawks in the past. You know, what happens when they play teams, this these matchups like this, and there are far better teams with this similar matchup come playoff time. You know, I don't think this is the case. People always say when their teams lose to bad teams, they, they play worse against bad Sometimes that's it's weird and that's the case. I don't really think this is the case here. Um, you know, I think they just it's a, it's a weird matchup. 
Not because they're, a, uh, and I don't know if the Giants are a better team than people think. I don't know if I want to call them a bad team at all. But it's just a bad matchup just because the matchup, just because what's on the field. Uh, Russell Wilson played a bad game. He played a bad game. Um, handling the pressure, hanging on to the ball too long, stepping into sacks, dropping far, way, way back, not throwing the ball away when he should, when it's an easy run. You know, it was weird. He looked like a young, he looked like a rookie quarterback. I don't know what that's about. I don't know what that's about at all. Um, so that's a little concern. That, that's a big reason they couldn't get the offense going. They had an unfortunate turnover. Chris Carson off his face uh, picked off. Uh, that was on, more on Chris Carson there, obviously. Um, but they couldn't get the offense going. You know, Jamal Adams has been picking it up. Defense in general has been picking it up. But the Giants made plays when they needed to because, you know, even though it's an improving defense, you can still move the ball on them, you know, enough to win the game. So it's – it's uh, I didn't really – it's a surprising one, and I didn't really learn – that's the thing. I didn't really learn anything from the Seahawks here. It's just kind of – it's kind of what I've been thinking in the back of my mind. I think I see. Yeah, I think I said it, you know, halfway through the season with it, and people were kind of getting on me. It's just kind of more, a little more obvious now. You know, it, it, you kind of got to question a little bit. It's a very good team that I that is still better. They're better than the Giants. Head to head's interesting. Head to head's interesting. Well, we think they're they're better though, obviously against the field. Uh, but can they get through those NFC teams that will present these problems and some in the playoffs? It makes you wonder. It makes you wonder. Um, so that's a, that's a tough one. And that's huge for the Giants. No Daniel Jones. It's huge. That's absolutely huge. Uh, they're they're pretty beat up at the pass rush position. They lost a lot of guys there. Lost Saquon Barkley, obviously. Uh, for the NFC East battle, though, that it's gigantic. Absolutely huge. Big win for them. Eagles, Packers. Uh, Eagles control pretty much most of this game. I talked about it many times going into the week. Eagles actually had a shot. I didn't, I didn't pick them to win, obviously, but they had a shot to keep it close, keep it interest, interesting because the Packers are they're a very good team, but they're one of the worst teams stopping the run, um, unfortunately, there for their sake. Uh, you know, So the Eagles got to come out. They got to pound the ball. Miles Sanders, I don't really care who it is. You got to pound the ball. They didn't really do that. Halftime between the running backs, nine carries, nine. And they were in the there. You know, the Packers were kind of pulling away going into halftime, but for the most part, you know, the Packers were a little slow early, a little bit. Three points only for the Eagles. Um, it's just pathetic game plan and game plan and play calling from from Doug Peterson. You know, Wentz wasn't doing much. He was struggling a little bit, hanging out of the ball too long. But it's mainly on Peterson there, which some games have been. But this one especially because the game plan, the play calling was pretty bad. Um, if they would have ran the ball early in this game, if they would have pounded the ball, they, they could have won this game. They could have been in this game. They actually got back in this game. Uh, even though I put the blame on Doug Peterson, Jalen Hurts comes in the game, and it's it's pretty it's pretty obvious at this point. It's pretty night and day um, that Jalen Hurts has just more to his game right now, and that's surprising, but it's just a fact right now. Is it in general? We don't know. Is Jalen Hurts going to continue where he left off in the second half? The next week, if he st- if he starts, which he should, we don't know. But we know there's a sh- there's a chance. He showed it here. The biggest difference was um, escaping the pressure. Um, you know, being a little more. Mo- Wentz is pretty athletic, but just in this offense, in this scenario, you need more athleticism. Jalen Hurd's a really really good runner too. Really good scrambler. Throwing on the run was great. That touchdown on fourth down was a beautiful, uh, beautiful pocket. Mo- you know, getting awareness, movement, getting outside the pocket. Beautiful throw on the run. Um, making that play. Just fantastic. Uh, you know, he's got to play next week. He's got to play. Uh, you know, I'd, I'd be extremely, I would be extremely surprised if, and actually, I don't know if I, I don't know if I would. <laughs> I was going to say, I'd be extremely surprised if he wasn't out there, but knowing Doug Peterson, you never know. But he needs to be out there because was, there was life. You know, there was more life, more plays on the ground, escaping the pressure, making the throws on the run, all of that. You know, all of that. Um you know, in a fresh year, healthy Eagles team, most likely Wentz is probably better. But in this scenario, it's got to be Hurts. Um, but, yeah, they actually had a shot to come back in the game. Jalen Rager uh, returned. To, you see how electrifying he is. He returned a punt. I wish the Packers would kind of just put him away not let him hang around in that game. They end up doing so. Aaron Jones with a beastly, beastly touchdown run. Kept thinking, you know, it's already a beastly run. Kept thinking, all right, somebody's going to get him here. Nope. Cuts inside when he's kind of far down there. Somebody's going to get him here. No. Nope. Back in. Uh, credit to David Bakhtiari. I mean, he's down there with Aaron Jones blocking. You got to respect the hell out of that. Um, so the Packers did put the game away at that point, but wish they would put the game away a little earlier. Wish the Eagles would run the ball a lot more, especially earlier. They actually had a shot in this game, believe it or not. Um, David uh, Devontae Adams, huge game. Um, you know, strong in this game. You know, strong hands, 
tough to bring down after the catch. Uh, you know, nothing, just nothing surprising though. A big game for him getting getting the end zone. Aaron Rodgers another big game for him. Just wish they would they wish they would put uh, things away. Darnell Savage had a freaky interception at the end. He had he had one against the Bears too. This one freakier, wild interception. Um, you know, towards the end of this game. Um, you know, so that he's been heating up. He's been playing pretty well. Um, so it's good to see that. But, yeah, it's another win for the Packers. Expected a win there, but the Eagles actually could have made things interesting. They kind of did in this game. Uh, Patriots, Chargers, I mean, Chargers. I mean, this is just pathetic in this game. After one like this, I'm never picking the Chargers again, that's for sure. Just every phase, poor performance. Every phase, the Patriots dominate the Chargers. Running the ball. I mean, Cam Newton didn't really need to, need to throw the ball uh, to win this game. He didn't really need to. Um, at all, sixty something yards. They didn't need to. They didn't need to. Dominated running the ball. Harris was getting some chunk yards. Um, special teams was dominant. Defense. It's that time of the year. It's that time. It's that Patriots time of the year. It's that Belichick time of the year. Uh, the defense is heating up. They got the perfect game plan. The pass rush really has been non-existent for the most part this season, especially in losses. All of a sudden, they're getting crazy pass rush, getting crazy pressure. Cardinals game, this game, uh, they, they got Herbert flustered. I mean, they got him in his head. Um, bad game for him. Belichick's got he's got the ways, you know, and they feasted on it. They feasted on it. There's really not, nothing else to say about that. You know, they, they dominate on every phase. They dominate on every phase, and they're in playoff mode, and here, here they come. It's tough. It's tough. There's some games they probably wish they had back. They could have won earlier in the year. Um, but it's going to be in the AFC, it's tough to squeeze in there. But you could see it. You could feel it. You could smell it. They're, <laughs> they're in that playoff mode. They're in that Patriots, you know, that, that Belichick mode, you know. Uh, the game plan. The game plan defensively mainly the last two weeks and the execution. Just fantastic. Chargers, uh, this has got to be the worst special teams I've ever seen. That's all I got. That's all I got there. Pathetic. Uh, people wonder why Anthony Lynn's not fired now, and he deserves to be. I'm on board with that. He deserves to be. But is, is there much of a difference if he's fired now and somebody's made the interim coach already on the staff and uh, whether he's fired now or you know or at the end of the season? What are we, we're going into week 14. There's really no difference. Uh, there's no it's no there's no wrong choice they fire him now they fire him at the end of the year there's no wrong choice no right I mean both are the right choice but um so I think people are freaking out a little too much there it's you know think about it's really gonna change just finish the damn year get him out of there I think that's the plan we'll see uh and then the Sunday night game which was actually interesting the Broncos credit to the Broncos mainly their defense uh offensively you know in the middle of the game drew lock is playing pretty well tim patrick was playing well Noah fan uh, melvin gordon was running the ball well but their defense really kept them in the game here really kept them in the game chiefs pull it off in the end why because because they're the better team they pull it off in the end that's what they do um broncos defense though shelby harris i've been saying for some time he's an underrated player he's a good he's a damn good player he's always getting his hands on the ball even on special teams we've seen it in the past he's just uh, you know, field goal block team, you know, just getting his hands in the ball. He's a pass deflection machine. This guy's a stud. This guy's an absolute stud. He was one of my top free agents going in into free agency. Uh, and I'm like, all of these different teams are going to want him because he plays nose, he plays D tackle, he plays everywhere. Um, he's a factor. He can fit any defense. And he's just sitting around there. And these other, you know, guys like DJ Reader getting big money. And he's just sitting around there. I'm kind of confused. And then he goes back to the Broncos for like nothing. Probably the most confusing thing in the offseason, really. You know, more confusing than Clowney sitting around that long, you know, and, and mind-blowing to me. I'm like, am I missing something? Am I seeing the wrong thing? Is this guy not as good as I think he is? And I, I think he shows it. He shows it. That guy's a stud, you know. So that was still – it's still one of the more surprising things of the offseason. Um, yeah, the defense did their job, though. They were getting pressure. One sack in this game, though, uh, the Chiefs couldn't get any pressure. They couldn't get the sacks there. Drew Locke getting the ball out pretty quick, uh, running effectively, you know, uh, credit to the Broncos offense line, though. They're improving every step of the way. That's impressive because they're kind of going from not actually worse but close, worse to, you know, maybe you know not first, but they're getting up there. They're improving every step of the way. So that's credit there. Impressive. Um, you know, Drew Locke early just playing hero ball, forcing things downfield and late, both to the same guy, Tyron Matthew, clutch for him. Um, so that's kind of Drew Locke's problem. He has, like, the talent in him. But at this point, it's tough to see him stay consistent. It's tough to fully get out, get it out of him. But he does have his moments within the game. I think Hamler let him down at one point. It wasn't the easiest catch, but it was a drop. That was a crucial moment in the game. Uh, I mentioned Melvin Gordon. He was running extremely well in this game. He was, you know, vintage. Kind of weird saying vintage because he's still kind of young somewhat. But vintage Melvin Gordon there. Um, 
yeah, having having a pretty good game. Uh, but I think a crucial moment was them kicking a field goal and missing it, which is rare for McManus, you know, right before half, and the Chiefs getting down there, getting a field goal. Even though the Chiefs end up winning by more than three, I thought that was a pretty big moment there, pretty big shift uh, in the game. Chiefs, last couple weeks, I haven't been happy with their play calling in the red zone, but at the same time, not really worried about it. Sometimes, you know, with teams, I get worried about it with the play calling. But they get too fancy, end-around things, trick plays. When you have Mahomes just throw the ball to the damn end zone, get in the end zone. Um, I hate it. It's shit play calling. You can get more points. This game's kind of close. I know they were probably confident about winning in the end. Uh, but just, just get the ball in the end zone, put the games away. But I'm not really worried about it because I think in like the playoff games against teams that they that they view it as more of threats, the Broncos are a sneaky team. Uh, they're, they're probably a damn good team if they're fully healthy, honestly. I thought they were going to be a playoff team, you know, six or seven seed. Uh, before the year if they're healthy um, but yeah I'm not really too worried because I think the Chiefs when it when it matters they'll get back to normal and they're probably making teams it's probably some sort of strategy which is, is it so it makes it it's not the end of the world um, kind of keep the teams on their toes like are they going to do this trick play like are they going to do this you know and they're going to kind of just let Mahomes do his thing there so uh, yeah, Kelsey was coming up big when he needed to Tyreek Hill Tyreek Hill could have had an insane amount of yards almost maybe it's uh, like the Last week, maybe not quite, but and then that would result in more points. You know, he didn't really play that great. Um, you know, some underneath plays. I mean, the speed, electrifying, the quickness, and the speed. I mean, it's uh, he's the fastest and the quickest player in football. A combination of both is just stupid. It's stupid. Um, you know, guys are right next to him, and all of a sudden he's just burst, and he's got, he's like he's he's way out in front. It's 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 impressive. It's ridiculous. Uh, but yeah, early bomb. I think it was the first possession for the Chiefs. He looked back at Justin Simmons, like, "Where is he at?" As the ball is coming in, and he was unable to track it because of that. That was bad. I shouldn't see that once, really. Um, and then that weird play that I've never seen before in my life, where he he probably doesn't need to jump for that ball. Uh, you probably catch it in stride. I can't really get on a guy for attacking the ball to try to beat the corner to it because or DB to it because it was Boye in that point, so a corner. Um, DBs are taught to attack the ball at its highest point. Don't let it come down to the receiver. So I can't really get on him for that, but in that scenario, if he tracked the ball correctly, if he read it right, he, he should have known he would have caught that in stride and that it's an easier catch. Jumping, attacking the ball is a harder catch than catching it with your body pretty much. Um, you know, inside your, your elbows, your biceps, your chest, all of that, you know, um, it's a little easier. So he tracked that poorly, but again, I can't really get on him too much for attacking the ball, but it, but it should be a touchdown, but it actually was a, technically it was a touchdown because the ball pops him in the air. He goes on his, that, that's how he, I don't really like Andy Reid kind of telling him if we, that we think that's what he said, but, or what was going on. Andy Reid kind of telling him you should have told me because, um, really what he should have told him he should have caught the ball originally, but. Um, yeah, his face is on the ground. He didn't know the ball popped up in the air without popping up on the ground, uh, and it ends up right in his arm. And that actually was a touchdown. Uh, I don't know how the guys upstairs don't see that. You know, they punted the ball. I've never seen anything like that. That was pretty wild. So, if they would have lost the game by, you know, seven or less, that probably would have hurt quite a bit. You know, because that was actually a touchdown. But um, yeah, then you debate did they really earn it because he originally dropped it, but he probably should have caught it in the first place. He did have the corner beat there. So interesting one, uh, Patrick Mahomes made some big time plays. You know, there, there was one throw he made to Kelsey where he was quickly moving up in the pocket to avoid pressure, and he was getting grabbed, and he still made that throw. See, quarterbacks, um, when they feel pressure, when the, most quarterbacks, even good ones, when they're about to get hit, they underthrow balls or throw the ball bad, and you almost think he must have got hurt there, but no, it's right before he let it, or he must have got hit there, but it was right before he let go of it because they're kind of feeling the pressure even though it's not there yet. Uh, that it's it's common. That happens. It's understandable. Mahomes is actually getting dragged, you know, getting grabbed while moving up in the pocket and still throws a perfect ball for. I mean, you just it's a guy where you know he can do these things, but he still amazes. Like he still amazes you. It's just it's it, it's it's just crazy to watch every single week. But credit to the Broncos. Uh, Kelsey gave credit to the Raiders. He meant the Broncos because they deserve some credit there. They 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 fought real hard. You know, they played good defensive ball here. Uh, and made plays offensive when they needed to. Tim Patrick, uh, yeah, that touchdown catch, good ball by Locke. Uh, forgot to credit him on that. Um, good go, good toe drag. I don't know if it was really a drag, but toe tap, I guess. Um, yeah, they stuck around. It's, it's going to be a pretty good team if healthy. They probably, even though Locke has some talent in him and people want to believe, just seen enough where we're in an era where – you know, not like 10 years ago or even, you know, even further back than that where, yeah, quarterbacks are very, very important, but you can win without having the best quarterback in football. 
like a great quarterback. You can win with other things. It's it's a bit different now. Offensive league, you need only a handful of quarterbacks can win a Super Bowl. And so if you don't have those guys, you know, one of those talented guys or caliber guy, you know, around that range, um, you got to keep looking. So that's kind of the case there with Locke. He has some talent. You, he has potential. You can get it out of him. He makes these mistakes that you think probably they, they normally don't change. Quarterbacks really normally, they improve a little bit. They normally don't change. So we're at the point where, again, talent's there, has some potential. It's not going to be, you're not going to go from this to, you know, that, if you get my point. Uh, but we've probably seen enough where, uh, we've, we, you know, we're, we're in this era, you got to keep looking. You know, I know some people want to like him. I want to like him. Um, and again, he has it in him, but we're at, we're at the point, just given the circumstances, given the era, given how hard it is to get the full thing out of quarterbacks, the full consistent thing, eliminate mistakes, uh, given all that, you, you got to be looking still. And you can't just snap a finger and come up with one, you know. You just got to be looking. You got to do your homework, you know. So that, that's that's the Broncos situation. A lot of people were asking me about Drew Locke. You know, are they going to stick around with him still? It's a tough situation, but it's most likely no because of those reasons, but Easier said than done finding one, so he could be the starter next year. Who knows? Maybe they want to see him with a healthier Broncos team. Team, who knows? So to wrap up the recap, these always go way longer than I they want. Talking too long, I'm gonna lose my voice one of these times. That's gonna do it though. Uh, smash that like button, subscribe, turn notifications on. We much much appreciate it. Follow us on Twitter. Do it. Make a Twitter. Follow us. It's very important. There's more content on there than on the channel, even though it's in text form. Constantly interacting with you guys on there so check it out please 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 follow please subscribe do your thing that's gonna do it thanks for watching goodbye